is not just a myth. Why do you think that all these cultures, all these people have stories about a flood? We now have more evidence than ever from ancient advanced civilizations like the Yonaguni Monument. Evolutionists call this Over 4,000 years ago, there was a flood. We now have more evidence than ever that proves that there was a flood more than 4,000 years ago. We have archaeology that proves it, and we have basically all the stories from all cultures across the whole globe that proves it. You can also take some time just to look at some of the recent discoveries from ancient advanced civilizations, like the Yonaguni Monument. the 70 rock paintings found along the Jinsha River in China, Tiwanaku in South America, Lake Titicaca, the Puma Punka ruins, the Chatata Wall in Cleveland, The Indus, building settlements of present-day India and Pakistan. The ancient city of Uruk and the story of Gilgamesh. The ancient civilization found in the Black Sea, just 12 miles off the coast of Turkey. Found by Dr. Robert D. Ballard the same man who found the Titanic. And then of course, there's Kobleki Tepe in Turkey. Now, almost all of these sites are older than 4,500 BC. And most of them are built in such a way that for us as humans, even today, it is impossible to replicate it. So most of them must have been built by the Nephilim. In the pre-flood world that we know, or some people know as the antediluvian period, the world was totally different. There was a lot less water than we have now and more land. Most of the continents were connected, known as Pangaea. So that is why a lot of the evidence of these ancient civilizations was discovered underwater, just like the one that they found in the Black Sea. It used to be above water. When the flood came, it didn't just rain from above water burst through the earth's crust. Genesis 7 verse 10 says, And after seven days the waters of the flood came upon the earth, in the sixth hundred year of Noah's life, in the second month, on the seventeenth day of the month. On that day all the fountains of the great deep burst forth, and the windows of the heavens were opened, and rain fell upon the earth forty days and forty nights. So water from inside the earth's crust came forth, just like fountains, and also water from above, it just rained. We still have, in a lot of areas across the globe, those cracks, those areas where the fountains of the deep burst through. They are called fault lines, scars of the cracks, and some are still moving, like a subduction plate sliding underneath another one. Now, you might have also realized while I was reading this passage that Noah was 600 years old. Yeah, a lot of the people before the flood, they got old. Some over 900 years, but I'll cover that in the next video. So the world before the flood was different. People lived longer. After the flood, it was different. We have a lot more water now. There was definitely a flood, and we don't just read that from the Bible, but from other civilizations, not just two or three, but almost from all of them. For example, the Sumerians have a flood story where the gods set out to destroy mankind. The sea god Enki informs Ziasutra, the ruler of Shuruppak, secretly about it to build a large boat. The flood came and, as it ends, Ziasutra honors the gods through sacrifice. The Epic of Gilgamesh was recorded on 12 stone tablets. It says the supreme god is determined to destroy humanity as it has grown too noisy. But the god Aya told Utnapishtim specific information to build a ship called Preserver of Life. 
He did it and he survived the flood. He built it and brought all his relatives and all species of creatures on the ship as well. The Aztecs believed Titlacón warned the man named Note and his wife Nina of a coming flood. Note and Nina hollowed out a cypress tree and Titlacón sealed them inside, telling them that they may only eat one ear of maize each. The Greeks believed Zeus was displeased with the human population. He told Deucalion, the son of Prometheus, to build an ark for himself and his wife, Pirha. After nine days of flooding, the world was destroyed and the ark rested on top of Mount Parnassus. There are many stories. The Chinese, for example, they do not just have one story, but many. Here's one of them. During the reign of Emperor Yao, the Yellow River valleys flooded entirely across the land. Yao's son Un the Great used the enchanted staff, which would one day belong to Wukong, to dig channels and trenches that lowered the waters. Another Chinese story is about Fu Hai, his wife, three sons and three daughters, just like Noah and his family. They escaped the Great Flood and were the only people alive on Earth. After the Great Flood, they repopulated the world. In Hindu stories, the god Vishnu appeared to the first man, Manu, in the form of a fish and told him that the world would be destroyed by a great flood. So he built a big boat for himself and his family with seeds and animals to replenish the earth again. In Buddhism, the flood story is called Samudha Vanijab Yataka, a long story about 1,000 families of dishonest carpenters ruled by a wise leader and foolish leader. Now the story is too long to tell in detail, but in the end, the wise man built a ship and survived the flood on the island with his followers, while the foolish leader and his followers died because they fell for the trick of a spirit and did not build a ship. There's a lot of flood stories. We have stories from, from Persia, Syria, Italy, Lithuania, Russia, from the Cree of Canada, from the Cherokee of America, Papago from Mexico, Peru, Hawaii, and the list just goes on. Now, let's just stop here. There was a flood. It's not just a myth. What do you think that all these cultures, all these people have stories about a flood? It's because it really happened. Some of the stories changed over time and that is what will happen if you continue to tell a story. But these civilizations lived far away from each other, thousands of miles and at different time periods. And yet they tell the same story. We cannot deny these stories, especially when we have so much geological evidence as well. It is our human story, history. That's where we come from. Noah's descendants stayed together for around 100 years until God confused their languages at Babel, if you recall from my previous video. Now, as these people moved and spread across the world, their descendants formed nations, each with their own languages. So they would have shared these stories in their languages until it became embedded in their culture. There are some people who don't want you to believe that there was a flood and advanced ancient civilizations before the flood because they don't want you to believe that the Bible is true and evolution is wrong. The fact that advanced civilizations existed more than 4,500 years ago, it goes directly against their whole theory their ideology. So they try to ridicule anyone who goes against them, even non-Christians like Graham Hancock, who created the series Ancient Apocalypse. You can watch it now on Netflix. People like Graham have found so much evidence of pre-flood civilizations that you cannot deny it, but you will rarely see it on TV or news controlled by the people who want you to believe in evolution. So. What other evidence do we have if there really was a flood? Well, it's all over if you just open your eyes and just look. Like Ken Ham says, it's from the seabeds to the mountaintops. You can see it everywhere you drive if you drive in your car or when you fly a plane by just looking at the physical features of the earth. Everywhere you go, that shows us that there was a huge flood that covered the earth. So if there was a flood, you would expect many dead things, right? Fossils of plants, animals, and humans that died quickly, right? Well, that is exactly what we found. 
Everywhere you look, there are layers of sand, soil and material laid down by water. In these sedimentary layers, we found billions of dead things, fossils from animals and plants that were buried very quickly and not over decades or millions of years. So, is there any evidence of these fossils that shows us that they died very quickly? Apart from just in the layers that they were buried, in the sedimentary layers. Yes, like this fish we found eating another fish, not having enough time to swallow it. And the tons of mudslides and sediments buried it instantly. They also found an itchy sore busy giving birth to a baby. And suddenly they were covered in mud, buried and became fossils. How long does it take certain animals to give birth? Not millions of years. <laughs> there are also fossils that we found that are so perfectly preserved that it would be impossible to be that perfectly preserved if it died over a long period of time. Look at this wasp fossil, the perfect wings. You can look at sea lilies, jellyfish and, and many other fossils. If fossils came from millions of years and if they evolved over those millions of years, we should have found evidence of the transition fossils, where they transitioned from one type of creature to another. I mean, the whole earth should be full of them. We don't find any. Evolutionists call this missing links. There's no evidence of this anywhere. All the creatures of the fossil records are fully formed and fully functioning without any hint of ancient ancestors that look differently. Now these group of people who want to mislead you to doubt God's word, they've been doing it through the ages and they're using evolution, Darwin's theory to try to mislead you, to believe in a lie and to doubt God that says that he created the world. <laughs> Here's something interesting. Charles Darwin himself said this in 1859. Why then is not every geological formation and every stratum full of such intermediate links? Geology assuredly does not reveal such finely graduated organic chain, meaning animals who evolved over time. There's no evidence of it. And this perhaps is the most obvious and serious objection which can be urged against the theory. Do they tell you these kind of things in your textbooks? Kids in school? Did you get it when you grew up in school? Of course not. They won't tell you these things. Darwin thought that they would find these missing links, probably sometime. It's been over 200 years, we've found none. And by the way, for me it's very interesting that Darwin's wife, Emma, was a devout Christian. You know, textbooks used to say, in the beginning God created. A few decades ago, everything changed. <laughs> and even the first sentence you'll find in many books is, billions of years ago, or millions of years ago. And they try to explain everything with the passage of time. But animals evolved. For example, they say this fish called Kulakans has been extinct for 66 billion years. They found this fossil of it. Do you know how long one million years really is? I mean, that's just so long. So they say this fish has been extinct for 66 billion years. Where do they even come up with these numbers? <laughs> it's interesting when you compare the books of uh, a few decades year, years ago and you look at them now with the new books, you see that these years are not the same. They keep on changing. Well, the fact is, this fish species was not extinct. They first found it in 1938 off the coast of Madagascar and South Africa, where I come from. Now, if evolution is true, I mean, 66 billion years is a long time period. So that fish should have looked different by now if evolution is true. The fish is exactly the same. The fact is that these fossils came from the time period of the flood, not 66 billion years ago. All the fossils we found of animals and plants are still the same as they are today. Crabs are still crabs, beetles are still beetles, and the list goes on. Now, what is interesting is, if the flood is true, you know, there would have been a few animals that were together, you know, with the flood. Is that what we found? Yes. 
we found graveyards of animals, meaning they died at the same time. There are fossil graveyards of clams, corals, brachiopods, crinoids, and trilobites. Now, I mentioned that we have a lot of seashells in, on dry land, you know, miles away from the ocean, which is strange, number one. But we also find, number two, chalk beds on dry land. And not just here and there, but it's just all over the globe. That's trillions of microscopic shells from the English Channel coast across Europe and into Israel. They're also found in the Midwest, USA, and in southwestern Australia. Where did it come from? Well, there was a flood. <laughs> so there used to be water and it carried the seashells. Now, guess what we found in these chalk beds? Crinoids, fish fossils, pliosaurs, turtle fossils, and other dino and bird fossils. So not only do we find the evidence of a lot of animals that died quickly on dry land, but also sea life that died on dry land. How is this possible? Well, there was a flood. The world was covered with water. For example, we have these fossil graveyards like the agate fossil beds of the National Monument of Nebraska. There's also evidence of ocean life embedded in the limestone on Mount Everest's summit. Fossils of crinoids, ancient underwater animals with tentacles and cone-shaped shells. How did sea life get all the way to the top of Mount Everest? <laughs> because there was a flood. The earth was covered with water. The flood also caused the coal and the um, oil that we have today. Imagine this, with the water just raising, doo -doo 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 -doo, with every tide, it gets higher, 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 right? And there's waves coming in. Every wave just knocks down trees and life, and then you get all these layers from the sea up until the mountaintops. And that's how we get these layers of oil and coal. Kent Hovind explained it pretty well. I have a theory about the oil. Here's my theory, okay? I believe about 6,000 years ago, God created everything. 4,400 years ago, there was a flood, okay? In that flood, lots of critters and people drowned. They got buried by the gravel and the rocks and the mud and the sand, and it got pretty heavy after a while, and it squished them into oil. So the oil is down there today from the people and animals that drowned in that flood. You know, in most places where you find oil, the pressure is unbelievable. Have you ever seen how somebody finds oil? It comes squirting out of the earth with immense power. Some places found the pressure to be 20,000 pounds per square inch psi. There's no way that the earth can hold these pockets of oil with that immense pressure for billions of years. No, they can't even hold it for over 10,000 years. And the flood that happened around 4,500 years ago, so it makes sense. Oil is made from squishing organisms together, and there is still pressure because this happened 4,500 years ago, at the time of the flood. Now, evolutionists teach kids, and well, they probably did when you were in school, unless you were a bad student and you were too lazy and you couldn't care less, but you probably saw it on TV. Anyway, <laughs> the point is this. They teach that when you look at the earth and you see those different layers, right? Those layers represent different ages. The geological column, they call it, is their time scale. Even the Jurassic age is also in there. They say all animals evolved over time and different animals should be found in different layers. This is plain nonsense and all you need is just a little bit of common sense. It's a, it's a lie. I do believe that there are different time periods, yeah, but not, not different ages of billions of years. Most of these layers shows us that the Earth is relatively a lot younger than evolutionists believe. And most of the layers were created at the time of the flood. It doesn't take millions of years for things to be petrified. You know, the things that you find in those layers and you say, oh, this has been petrified, it must have been uh, billions of years old. No, it doesn't take billions of years for something to be petrified. They found petrified trees standing up in these layers, through different layers which does not make sense because trees aren't billions of years old. But here they are telling the kids the layers are different ages, and yet all over the world, petrified trees are found, like this one, standing up. 
connecting different rock layers. Now, if you have a petrified tree standing up, running through multiple rock layers, I don't think it's common sense to say the layers are different ages. Not by much, anyway. I mean, how long can a dead tree stand there before it falls down? Five years, ten years, twenty years, five thousand years? I doubt that. And yet, petrified trees in the poly, they're called polystrata fossils, going through multiple layers. They're very common. Hundreds and hundreds have been found. It would only take one to prove the point. But hundreds have been found, petrified, standing up. In central Alabama, there's a large coal mine where they found all kinds of petrified trees standing up. Now, the kids have been taught for years that those two layers of coal, called the Mary Lee and the Blue Creek Formation, are different ages by millions of years. And yet, when you get all the fossils together, they label them, sample A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. You can put it together and figure out and prove positively the Mary Lee and the Blue Creek had to form within a few weeks or months of each other. Again, it doesn't take that long for things to get petrified. They found a petrified cowboy boot with the man's leg bone still in it in a dry creek bed in West Texas in 1980. Now, let's go back to the trees. Why is there not one tree that's older than, let's say, 5,000 years? Because there was a flood 4,500 years ago. The world's oldest tree is a bristlecone pine tree. According to some test books, it's 4,300 years old. The proof of creation of that of a flood and evolution, it's everywhere if you just open your eyes and just ask questions, if you're just open. Let's take the ocean, for example. When it rains, around 30% of the rainwater moves into the ocean and with it, the mineral salt. Today, it is around 3 to 4% salt, and that's what they say. Now, if the world was more than billions of years old, why is the sea not a lot more saltier? That's because 4,500 years ago, there was a flood. Even if the world was just 1 million years old, and there was water in the sea and rivers, then the ocean should have been a lot saltier. But it's not, because there was a flood. Did you know that you can discover a lot of things when you look at a reef? I love snorkeling. I love it. I just love to go down in the water and just... <sighs> no humans, no traffic, no noise, just sea life. There's a lot that you can notice when you look at a reef. Did you know that they watched the Great Barrier Reef for 20 years? They watched it grow and calculated from the results that the reef is less than 4,200 years old. Did you get that? Why is the oldest reef that we have in the whole world only around 4,200 years old? Why is there not reefs out there that's older? Maybe a... a 50,000 years old or 100,000 years old or older because there was a flood 4,500 years ago. The evidence is everywhere. If you just look, if you look at canyons as well, if you like look at coal beds, if you look at caves, I love caves. I've been to amazing caves here in South Africa with beautiful cave formations. And when you go inside, you see these cave formations, stalactites. And, you know, evolutionists say that Small drops of water created stalactites over millions of years. Well, they are beautiful and they grow down from the cave ceiling, but they're not millions of years old. How do they know that? It's crazy. It's, it's nonsense. Whenever you ask them something about something or almost anything, their answer is always millions of years. Time is their excuse for everything. They found some under the Lincoln Memorial that was only built in 1922. They found some in a mine in Australia after they reopened the mine when it was closed for only 55 years. There are many other examples and it proves that it doesn't take millions and millions of years for these things to grow. And you know, the geological column is also made up. It is nonsense. Almost all of it, the layers, was created at the time of the flood. According to geologist Dr. John Whitmore, 80 to 85% of the Earth's land surface does not have even three geological periods appearing in correct consecutive order. It becomes an overall exercise of gargantuan special pleading and imagination for the evolutionary uniformitarian paradigm to maintain that there ever were geological periods.
But still, this is what they teach people today. And no one questions it. Or there are a lot of people who question it, but a lot of people who don't. They just blindly follow them and say, yes, okay, yes, this is, this is what we have to learn. This is true, okay. No, you have to question it. Because if you don't, it will mislead you and lead you away from believing the Bible, which is the truth, the only absolute truth we have in this world. This happened to Charles Darwin himself, how he was misled. You know, I can, I can go on and, and, and give you a lot of evidence more, but I want to tell you this story about Charles Darwin that will shock you. He didn't just randomly start this theory of evolution in his head. It, this lie came from somewhere. I'm going to tell you soon, but personally I believe ultimately it came from the devil to mislead people to doubt that there is a God, that they will be judged when they die, that there is a hell and a heaven. When Charles was 22 years old and he actually graduated from Bible college, yes, that's correct, he was going to become a preacher. But then he set sail on the ship called HMS Beagle in 1831 to sail around the globe to see the world, but also to collect samples of bugs for a biologist. So he went on the ship and every guy who would become a preacher would take his Bible with him. So he probably went with his Bible on this trip, but with his Bible he took another book that just came out. This book is called Principles of Geology by Charles Lyell. This book changed everything. And Darwin said, Disbelief in the Bible crept over me on a very slow rate. But at last complete, the rate was so slow that I felt no distress. He wrote this to a friend called Russell Wallace. Now I want you to understand something. I believe that he was never a Christian in the first place. Because if you have an encounter with something big, like a lion, <laughs> and you go home and you say, hey, I just had an encounter with a, with a lion. People will look at you and say, well, why are you not dead? So they will think, yeah, you probably lied. If you have an encounter with the living God, where He makes you a new creation, where you accept Him as Lord and Savior, and He gives you His Spirit, because God is Spirit, and you can only worship Him in spirit and in truth. That's only how you can connect with Him. People who are not spiritual alive, they can't. They can't even understand it. And so I believe that Darwin was not a true Christian because he turned his back on God. You can't do that if you really had an encounter with God. 1 John 2 verse 19 says, They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out, that it might become plain that they all are not of us. So I don't believe that Darwin was a real Christian, because if he was, he would have had new spiritual life. God would have made him a new creation, given him his spirit. Regeneration. That means you cannot be the same as you used to be, because you are spiritually reborn. A whole different person. So Darwin, who now said he's not a Christian anymore, must have not been a reborn Christian in the first place. It was probably only something that was part of his culture, just man-made religion for him. And there are many people today who call themselves Christians, but they are not. It's just man-made religion and laws and traditions and stuff, but they have no real relationship with God. John 4 verse 24 says, God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. If you have not been reborn spiritually again, then you cannot. It's impossible to understand the things of God because He is spirit. So, if you just focus on religion, just these outward traditions and things and laws that you do, it means absolutely nothing if you are not changed on the inside. Even though you do these things, you go to church, you grew up in a Christian home, it doesn't matter at all. The things of God will not make sense to you. The Bible says the natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him, and he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. If you don't know God, I want to plead with you as your friend who really cares about you to ask God. Ask Him to reveal Himself to you and His truth to you, because you've been brainwashed by the devil through other dead religions, or maybe you're an atheist, for atheists and those who believe in evolution, that's their religion. That is what they believe. That is your belief. 
not realizing that all of it, all these other religions, like I also discussed in the previous video, ultimately comes from Satan, pretending to be the God of this world, just misleading people. He is the father of all lies. He works behind the scenes with his demons through evil people and dead religion to mislead you. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 3 says, And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world, lower capital G, has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, with ourselves as your servants, for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, Let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. You see, understanding the truth is extremely important because your very soul depends on it. There was a flood. God created the world and He created you. You are not here by mistake and you are not a mistake. Demons are real. Angels are real. God is real. And so is heaven and hell. The evidence is staring you in the face. The only problem is, is you probably never looked at it or really searched for it because you're too busy with the things and focused on the things of this temporary world that is passing away, but you can die today. Over 300,000 people die every day. One of these days, it might be you. Every second on that clock is a second closer to your death. And where will you go? You see, there needs to be a desire within you, in your inner man, a real burning desire to know the truth and then to find it to find God Himself, and He wants you to find Him. God says in the Bible, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. God has always been there just waiting for you to truly seek Him. The Bible also says, the God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by man, nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mankind life and breath and everything. And he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined allotted periods and the boundaries of their dwelling place, that they should seek God and perhaps feel their way toward him and find him. Yet, He is actually not far from each one of us. For in Him we live and move and have our being. I want to ask you to really find God. You know, a lot of people say, when Christians say, when they share the truth, they say, don't put this down my throat. I don't want to hear any of this. But let me ask you this. Have you ever thought of it this way? If they truly love you, they would tell you. Because if you don't accept God, if you still want to live sinfully, you want to kill, steal, murder, and rape, and do all bad stuff, and then if you die, you're going to go into eternal punishment. And we're warning you about this truth. You only have this short temporary earth, this time here on this earth, to make a decision to choose the light or to choose the darkness. And we are warning you about the darkness that you don't see. It's like I'm going to go outside and um, I'm just going to go to the car and I see that there's a snake, a very poisonous snake. And I just come back in and I sit down and, and you say, all right, I, um, I think I overstayed my visit. I'm going to go home and I'm going to go to my car now. And I don't say anything about the snake that is there waiting to kill you. Would I be really caring about you just sitting there and say, um, all right, but if you do go, um, yeah, I hope I see you again, just trying to be kind and nice to you? No, I'm going to tell you, hey, there's a snake there that might kill you. That's what real friends do. I care about you and I want you to know the truth before it is too late. 
In the next video, I'm going to show you what the world looked like before the flood. It's going to be a very interesting video. And after that, we're going to talk about the false theory of evolution as well. In the meantime, please watch these videos here that will help you to find God. Before you go, always remember that I love you. And God loves you too. Life is short, so don't waste yours. See you in the next video. Cheers, guys.